Hey there everybody, how's it going? My name is Thamriel. Welcome everybody to Final Fantasy XIV Commentary. In today's commentary, we're gonna be talking about Obi Cody's Go to Heaven on the High Developers Blog that was posted today on the 28th of June. The Developers Blog is teasing the release of Heaven on High that's gonna be coming up in patch 4.35. They announced immediately in the first uh, part of the post that it's going to be released in five days, launching on Tuesday, July 3rd, as being hypothesized by multiple people over on the forums that follow the trend of how content is released for Final Fantasy XIV in the past. Heaven on High is the second installment of the Deep Dungeon series, following the release of Palace of the Dead that was released back in Heaven's War patch. The current requirements for Heaven on High will be as follows. You have to be a Disciple of Warrior or Magic at level 61 or above, have completed the Stormblood Maid scenario quest, Tide Goes In, Imperials Go Out at level 63 quest, and have cleared Floor 50 of Palace of the Dead. When registering to enter, all party members on all worlds must be in the Ruby Sea. That means we'll be able to, from the launch, be able to put together a party cross-world with other friends and party members and across your cross-world link shell. And you'll be able to join in and join up and dive right in with your friends across different worlds. Means you don't have to be on the same server, but as long as you're in the same data center together, you can party up and dive right in. You can enter heaven on high by speaking to the NPC that will be located in Ruby C at coordinates X21.4 and Y9.2 similar to the Palace of the Dead. I'm pretty sure the NPC is going to be right outside the Jenga Tower. So all you have to do is just head over to Ruby C, head over to the Jenga Tower Etherite, and then talk to an NPC, which will begin a storyline. Like with Palace of the Dead, Heaven on High will be featuring its own storyline as well, which will be following through levels 1 through 30. Levels 31 through 100 will be counted as a challenge mode to really challenge the players. Let's go ahead and break this post down little by little as we go through it, however. I'm getting a little bit over excited for this. I've been waiting for something for me to do that is of repeatable variety in Final Fantasy XIV. As said before in a previous video, patch 4.3 was incredible. It was excellent. It was amazing. The dungeon, the raid, the trial, the story was awesome. I loved it. But there was not a lot of replayability to it because I've already done the trial and farmed the hell out of it with my free company members and friends and we got a bunch of mounts and weapons to drop from there already. After you do that a bunch of times, you kind of start running out of steam, so you want to try to be able to do something in between as you're also making progress on Sigma Scape Savage. And somebody like me, if I have to do one piece of content again and again and again without having any variety or without having the ability to step away and do something else entirely or completely different from that content that I'm doing, like Sigma Scape Savage, it kind of drive me insane and kind of get me to be demotivated from doing it again and again. Regardless, uh, the gigantic tower, the Jenga tower in Ruby Sea, will indeed be the spot for heaven on high. That place is really difficult to miss. If you've ever been to Ruby Sea and you see a giant tower, that is the place. The interior features an Asian theme and apparently it's going to be all part of the storyline. The aesthetical part and aesthetical aspects of the tower are going to be particularly designed for the story, at least for floors 1 through 30. They'll probably start varying it up a little bit like they did in Pass of the Dead for floors um, 51 to 100 and then from 100 to 200. And for Heaven on High, the floors for 31 to 100 will probably have their own different variety and quirks to them. And I'm guessing because we're only getting 100 floors in total, they announced they won't be doing some sort of an upgrade or an expansion to the floors as far as I understand like they did in Pass of the Dead. Because we're going to be getting only 100 floors, I'm assuming these floors are going to be really challenging. Since we're only going to be getting consolidation of 100 floors in total, I'm guessing they want to try to see if you can impact and put in as much challenge to each floor as possible to make sure that they feel challenging and they rival each other. For those players unaware, the story will reach its conclusion, like I said earlier, once you complete floor 30. Now floor 31 to 100 is set as a type of challenge mode. I'm just reiterating what the developer post posts here. You can only enter floor 31 and above solo or in a fixed party of 2-4 to four players. The save data must also have 0 for party knockout count as well, so be careful. Be advised that the party knockout count will also increase in the event that your party abandons the duty or logs out while inside the instance, which means that in order to go from floor 31 to 100 and then continue further on, you gotta make sure your party never receives a party knockout or party-wide knockout. If somebody logs out for no reason or bans the duty for no reason, that counts as a party knockout, so it means the entire group has to reset back to floor 31, which means it's highly recommended to grab a party out there that is willing to commit. Usually, 
friends or free company members or teammates that want to commit to progressing further up and up. You might want to have to redo some of the comps here and there in order to have a proper tank, healer and 2 DPS uh, trifecta in order to make sure that you can progress further. The trifecta might change and I could definitely see a lot of people being able to maybe 3 man or 2 man or possibly even solo some of the floors as a particular job, probably red mage or something. But nevertheless, I'm very excited to see what people do for these floors and how will they be able to pass through the floors. And I'm expecting them to be really, really challenging. They're promising to have a lot of vicious foes awaiting adventures from floor 31 and above, and even have particular enemies that will be really difficult to fight against, which will challenge the party composition. They even have a picture of an otter with the name I am you. What I'm guessing here is either this, either these two options. Either this is going to be part of a trap that will be set in Heaven on High, similar to the frog trap that was in Palace of the Dead, or it's going to be one of the items that will turn you into an otter for some sort of an ability, maybe a stealth ability or maybe a stealth reveal ability because of the lantern. In Palace of the Dead, along with the enemies that you're fighting, you also have to deal with the chance of possibly stepping on a hidden trap that is layered out all over the place. There are items you can pick up in Palace of the Dead during your dungeon runs and during your floor runs from chests uh, in order to reveal the positional traps or completely remove the traps from a particular floor. These traps are probably going to be applied also in Heaven on High in order to bring up the challenge for these uh, for your party members. These traps are mostly used as a way to throw a little bit of a speed bump down the road for your party and I'm guessing the traps are also going to be laid out and also going to be hidden for heaven on high. There was a particular trap in Pass of the Dead that actually turned a player that stepped on it into a frog, making them unable to attack or defend or heal or support or anything. The only thing they could do was wait out the timer and use... the only thing they could do was... they couldn't even use items. The only they couldn't even use items. The only thing the player that was frog was able to do was move around. The frog the frog debuff eventually would be removed after a certain period of time, after the debuff would run out. But regardless, it was a very inopportune thing to bump into. And even today, when I run Pass of the Dead, it is one of the most annoying traps to get yourself into because it completely immobilizes your ability to defend yourself or to attack. You can only move around and hope that your friendlies will also help you out. I'm guessing the otter is going to be either a item that would turn you into an otter with some sort of an ability, or it will be a version of the frog trap, but instead of turning you into an otter that's not a that's unable to even do anything. The mood and the music will also change as a climb higher up the tower, so be sure to check those out too. And I'm actually very excited for it because in Palace of the Dead, they used to randomize different tracks for the set of floors that you're going through. And they would also replace some of the basic music that you would hear from raids, trials, and dungeons be repeated over back into Palace of the Dead. So it always mixed up the types of tracks and types of music that you listen to as you progress through certain parts of the floor. Why does the tower exist? Who are these monsters inside here in the first place? Why is the place going to have an Asian aesthetic? I'm personally excited for the story myself and I'm excited to see what it's all about. Regarding the story, I'm assuming there's going to be something very supernatural about it, maybe something going on with spirits or demons or something, the Oni, possibly, perchance, perhaps. I can't really exactly 100% understand what it's about. It could be even a prison. The Jenga tower could possibly be even a prison. If you look at it from the outside, it definitely looks like a large set of blocks from maybe like a jail cell or something. So maybe this place could be a prison that embodies and entraps demons or Oni or something. And the biggest question of all, is the Dota Mount obtained by appraising treasure? which they didn't answer, they just tease about it. I'm assuming the Dodo would be dropping from either bosses or from their appraising treasure, or could be at a very rare chance be found in one of the item chests within Heaven on High. But regardless, I'm excited to do this in particular. I cannot wait to... I'm also, I'm also wondering if how many... I'm also wondering how many save slots we're gonna have and if they're gonna be expanding to three save slots by any chance, or if you're gonna be stuck with two save slots like we had in Palace of the Dead. The two save slots allow you to have a separate party composition. For example, you could have a solo composition where you could just queue in by yourself and level a particular job and have a full party composition that actually progresses through higher floors. I'm hoping if you can get another save slot that I could possibly put together three teams, one full on free company team, one team with friends and one team and then one team over on live streams to possibly be able to do on stream. 
But regardless of that, I'm excited to possibly stream the game and actually work on progress and finally hopefully reach floor 100. I'm expecting to be very very punishing, I'm expecting to be very challenging and I'm expecting to suffer a lot, but it's also gonna be really really fun. Are you excited about Heaven on High? What are you most excited about it in particular? How hard and challenging do you think it's gonna be? What are good comms that you think will be useful in Heaven on High? I'm also wondering how many people are gonna try to solo it up to 100th floor. I'm assuming, I'm assuming, this is just an assumption, but I'm assuming players that play Red Mage and Paladin will try to see if they can solo the place, since these two jobs have a particularly good hybrid build of defensive and healing and offensive and healing in particular. Nevertheless, I'm very excited for this piece of content. I cannot wait until it's released on July 3rd, right before July 4th celebration. I can't wait, it's gonna be so exciting. What do you think about this piece of content in particular? Are you excited for it? What are your comments on it? What are your thoughts on it? What are your questions on it? Nevertheless, I'm gonna link the developer blog over in the description below if you want to read it for yourself. That doesn't have a lot of writing, I literally reiterated everything that it has with some of my own commentary. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed the video regardless. My name is Samriel, like, subscribe, and as always, have a great day, and I'll see y'all in the next video of whatever I make. See ya!